From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. And good Thursday morning. Welcome to Montana This Morning. It's October 27, 2022. Thanks so much for watching and waking up with us. We do begin this morning with the very latest on the future of Metro Park. It now appears the facility will remain under county control. Officials say they're ending efforts to hand over management to a private company after some legal challenges over the integrity of the selection process. Q2's Casey Conlin has the details. Metro Park will remain in Yellowstone County's hands. The county officially ending its process to seek private management of the facility. A lawsuit and temporary restraining order filed by a local attorney seem to be the last straws in a contentious debate that's lasted over a year. Most uh, bothersome was the fact that I found contact with OVG going back as early as March of 2019. Billings attorney Gene Gerusi filed the lawsuit last month, alleging commissioners Don Jones and Dennis Pittman had inappropriate contact with Oakview Group during the public request phase and that they were unquestionably favoring OVG to win the bid. Only they and ASM Global, both based in LA, submitted bids. That's what I was concerned about given the content of the emails I had and literally the tens upon tens upon tens of phone calls between OVG and commissioners. County Deputy Attorney Gina Lurvick filed a motion Tuesday to dismiss the lawsuit because of the county's decision to terminate the process. The complaint is moot, Lurvick wrote. Jerusi requested the court stop the process with the requests. The county stopped the process with the requests. There is no process for the court to stop. Jerusi disagrees. I'm concerned about the integrity of the competitive bidding process. I'm concerned about the fact that this is a process that could be repetitive in nature. I don't want to have to go through this again. He now has a couple of weeks to respond to the motion, which he says he will do. We reached out to the commissioners for comment, but did not hear back as of broadcast time. The court brief denies any wrongdoing. Yellowstone County asserts that the lawsuit holds no merit. Any communications had between county commissioners were in no way in conflict or violation of the law. But the county does say it ended the process because of the significant backlash it's been receiving. It is clear to the county commissioners that the process continues to be beleaguered by doubts and the board is concerned that the public continues to have apprehensions regarding its processes in this matter. We want potential bidders to feel comfortable that they're going to get a fair shot. If they don't feel that they're going to get a fair shot, then they won't submit a bid and we as taxpayers then lose out on maybe getting the best deal for the money spent. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. All right, everyone's been asking Miller that important question about, yeah, <laughs> about yeah. Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of a jacket are you going to have to put on? Gloves? Yeah. I don't know. It's not going to be that bad. We're looking at temperatures in the 40s and 50s. Uh, going to be, and we'll see some clouds out there. Uh, maybe a few sprinkles of rain in spots, but most of us, no rain whatsoever. So. Knock on wood, it looks like the Halloween forecast for trick or treating this year is going to be okay. Excellent. And then we get to the middle of next week and then we see some changes come oh. into play. So we'll talk about that coming up here with the main forecast in just a bit. Backtrack a little bit. Yesterday, our high of 49, so a little bit below average. Our overnight low, a little bit below average as well. We had a top gust yesterday of 22. Uh, could see some gusts 20 to 25 miles an hour again today in Billings and areas east. Along the foothills, we have a chance to see some gusts over 50 miles an hour, maybe up to 60 this afternoon through tomorrow morning. So in those areas, you definitely want to use caution while you're driving. It's been very dry out there for the month. Uh, we're going to wrap up the month, I think, on a, on, a, on a dry note. No rain really in the forecast. Uh, so we're, we're still falling ahead. We're falling behind for the month, still ahead for the year, but still very dry out there in portions of the Q2 viewing area. Of course, we're well below where we should be in terms of, uh, on average, the snow totals. That may change next week, though. They absolutely could see another system come through to give us some of that snow. 34 right now at the airport. Feels like 26. Winds out the southwest at about 10 miles an hour. 20s and 30s as we get up and at them with highs today in the 40s and 50s. And we're only going to get warmer moving forward. We'll take a look at that with the main forecast coming up. Do you think we'll see any sunshine today? Oh, absolutely. Good bit of sunshine today. Uh, just going to be windy, especially off to our west. So you'll definitely feel the chill in the air. Yeah, it'll be nice and sunny, but you'll still feel chilled. Yeah, I kind of like days like that, though. Yeah, me too. It's kind of nice. We're crazy like that. Yeah, we are. All right, Miller, <laughs> yeah. thanks so much. Yeah. OK, we are looking at some new polling numbers this morning showing Republican Matt Rosendale will likely hold on to his house seat. The MSU Billings Mountain States poll. It also shows plenty of undecided voters in our eastern district. Q2's Jackie Coffin tells us why those voters could have a major impact on Election Day. 
It's the 35th time political scientists here at MSUB have polled Montanans on how and when they're going to vote. And while it's impossible to know precisely how an election is going to turn out, polls like the Mountain States poll give insight onto how Montanans feel about hot button issues and candidates on and off the ballot this November. The biggest seats up for grabs this election cycle two congressional seats, one in District 2, the Eastern District, and the newly formed District 1 on the western side of the state. The poll conducted between October 3rd and October 14th puts incumbent Congressman Republican Matt Rosendale ahead of his three challengers with 35 percent of the vote. Independent Gary Buchanan is polling at just over 21 percent, and Democrat Penny Ronning is at 17 percent. Libertarian Sam Rankin has about 5 percent of the vote. But but almost 20% of voters don't know who they will pick. Very likely this is an advantage to Rosendale. Opposition put together might be fairly high, but considering that that opposition is then split into two, a good scenario for Rosendale. In the Eastern Congressional campaign, poll results don't change the goal for Democrat Penny Ronning and Independent Gary Buchanan. I don't really focus on um, things that other people are studying, I focus on what Montanans are saying and focus on what I'm hearing from Montanans and the discussions that I'm having. I put 22,000 miles on my car since February and I haven't left Montana. I haven't left Congressional District 2. So uh, I've been traveling around throughout this district and talking with people here. In the last two weeks of campaigning, Ronning and Buchanan are on the road. Wednesday, Ronning is in Billings and Livingston. Buchanan is in Fort Benton and Great Falls. I, I just got the results of that poll. I think what I'm hearing is that people are not satisfied with the incumbent. I mean, I think 35% for a, an incumbent and 17% undecided uh, I think it gives me a hell of a shot. MTN reached out to incumbent congressman and frontrunner Republican Matt Rosendale by email and phone to participate in this story, but we have received no response from his campaign. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. MSUB's polling also shows Montanans generally approve of both Senators Steve Daines and John Tester, and Governor Greg Gianforte has a higher approval rating than any other elected official. 53% of Montanans, though, say they disagree with the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Some details this morning on how the city of Billings is taking action after this. Two kids recently struck by cars on a busy Heights street. Officials say the walk to Bench Elementary will be safer as the city plans to slow traffic in the area. And Milton Road will become a 25 mile per hour school zone with flashing beacons and more beacons will be installed to a crosswalk at Unta Park Drive. All of it expected to be done by the spring. We are also adding some improvements up by the, the lake as well by fishing game there. There's kind of that short radius curve there. Drives a little tough if you're driving too fast. And so we're going to update some signage and things in that area to kind of make it a more safe curve. The city has been conducting traffic studies on Lake Elmo Drive and planning the changes since May. We are bringing you some new numbers this morning showing Montana tourism is rebounding from the pandemic far better than the rest of the country. However, local leaders say the data is deceiving and they're asking for help from the state legislature. Q2's David Jay explains. COVID-19 took its toll on the tourism industry, and while some states are still feeling the impacts, Montana has experienced some recovery, in part because of the proximity to the great outdoors at a time when cruise ships and amusement parks were shut down. Montana was kind of their answer to that, to get out and explore and have fresh air. So we've benefited somewhat from that, but now it's really a matter of keeping that momentum and having the tools in place that can keep that growth happening. But even here in Montana, it's a state divided. What's happening in the West isn't necessarily true in eastern Montana. Montana, and that was the case even prior to COVID, and that was the focus of some of the conversation Wednesday at a tourism conference in Billings. The importance of tourism as a whole to the state, to Yellowstone County, to Billings, you know, uh, our funding is very important. It helps us market and sell Billings as a tourism destination. The group here discussed legislative priorities for the upcoming session and the need to focus more on the state's marketing efforts on communities like Billings. Dax Schieffer, Voices of Montana Tourism Director, says travelers spent an estimated $948 million in Gallatin County in 2018 and 2019 and $613 million in Flathead County, the state's most popular tourist communities. Yellowstone County trailed far behind with $312 million spent. 
Schieffer wants to let the state legislature know that marketing money from bed tax collections is still needed in eastern Montana. These communities really could use some help when it comes to keeping a lot of their shops and their restaurants and their stores open. And when you do that, and you can subsidize that with visitors, it makes the community that much stronger. Our uh, businesses understand that tourism and that visitation is very important to their bottom line and to that commerce. In Billings, David J, MTN News. All right, new this morning, 17 people are behind bars in California and Washington state after a massive drug bus linked to Mexican drug cartels. Authorities seized, look at that, that's 300,000 fentanyl pills. It's enough to kill 102 32,000 people. So the FBI tracked those suspects for months, they say, monitoring their efforts to recruit people in the Seattle area distribute narcotics. There is some frustration brewing in Stillwater County this morning. A road to the mine still unusable five months after it swallowed it was swallowed by flooding. Well, Q2's Charlie Kleps tells us why local leaders are blaming the federal government for that slow rebuild. It's been nearly five months since disastrous floods swept out this road, which used to have direct access to the Stillwater mine. And on Wednesday evening, officials met to try and put together a reconstruction plan as winter quickly approaches. This stretch of road was among the most significant damage caused by the flooding this June. And while the Stillwater mine and its operations have been able to proceed, people in the area are starting to wonder when it will be fixed. So we are good to get construction started on this as we have been with all other road projects throughout the county. According to the meeting this Wednesday evening featuring county commissioners and engineering consultants, the goal is to have a brand new road built by the time high water season arrives next spring. From the county's perspective, I think we're fairly confident that that roadway is going to be restored for public access come next spring if everything goes right this winter. Officials say the process has taken even longer than expected due to dealing with FEMA and other government institutions. We've been trying to push really hard. We've had we've met with Senator Daines. We're we're continuing to try and get a meeting with Army Corps because a lot of these permits they'll you know one will be reviewed and the next and the next agency wouldn't review it until the first agency's done. Any work done on the river is not allowed to commence until the end of brown trout spawning season, which ends November 15th. Officials did say that the reconstruction of the road will occur during the winter months so that future damage when the water speed picks up can be avoided. In Nye, Charlie Clapp.